Hello, and welcome to World Class. This time, we're visiting the wonderful region of the Algarve in southern Portugal. Maritime history, hillside villages, and beautiful beaches encompass this stunning area. It's an area blessed with architecture, character, and a warm year-round Mediterranean climate that welcomes visitors from around the world to experience the stunning scenery on offer. From the sandy beaches of the east to the majestically rugged cliffs in the west, this coastline is interspersed with cave-like grottos, traditional towns, and quaint fishing ports. To tell us more of this region is the well-informed Joa Massimo. The Algarve is located in Portugal, which is the southern country of all Europe, and the Algarve itself is also the southern province of Portugal. It's a beautiful area. We have great beaches. We are located in the west. We have beautiful little beaches along the coastline. Some of them you can only reach by boat. The most beautiful parts to visit during a boat trip is obviously the west due to the, the incredible coastline we have, to the cliffs all along the coast. And along those cliffs there are many caves, some bigger, some smaller, which you can visit. It's beautiful because you have a crystal clear water reflecting sometimes if the sun shines in the right position, reflecting on the upper side of the cave. So it's, it's a beautiful uh, visit to you. With a head for heights, you may well wish to take the view from above, but if not, then wander down the cascading steps that lead you to one of the small coves, and then board a local fishing boat for your own private tour. One of the most famous of all the spots along the coast is the Caves of Lagos. No visit to the Algarve should go without a trip to witness the striking structures that both wind and water have carved over the years from these limestone cliffs. Everywhere you look, there are interesting shapes and holes in the rock face that lead you into a hidden port. Here you can rent a boat and simply bob around for a perfect lazy summer's day. It's the tranquility and spectacle that makes this area of the Algarve so special, for everywhere you turn there's something new and unique to admire. The scenery is quite spectacular. These clifftop walks, while not for the faint-hearted, are a joy for mind, body and soul. In the far west corner of Portugal, the cliffs become altogether more powerful and menacing, and the ocean currents stronger than the calmness of Lagos. But as this is the most southwestern point in Europe, it's not too surprising. To tell us more of the history is Valentino Agostino. This place is called Cape St. Vincent because according to a legend, in the 4th century, there was St. Vincent of uh, Saragossa, and uh, he was killed in Valencia. He was um, killed by the non-Christians, and then it is said, according to the legend, that his body came ashore, it appeared here in this area, and then the, there was a small chapel made in his area, in this cape, and uh, they were coming on pilgrimage, and then our first king, Afonso, when he was going to a battle against the Moors, it is said that he promised to the saint that if he was going to win the battle against the Moors, he would build a, ch a church in Lisboa and then he in fact he won the battle. So nowadays, uh, as a matter of fact, St. Vincent is the patron saint of Lisboa, of Lisbon. Perched high on the cliff tops of Cap St. Vincent is the lighthouse, built over the ruins of a 16th century Franciscan convent to give the ships safe passage to and from the Mediterranean. It's time to navigate ourselves back along the coast to a wonderful hotel nestled on a small cliff face. Overseen by the impressive bell tower bearing its name, the Villa Vita Park Hotel is a wonderfully traditional masterpiece that has something for all the family. The selection of pools is endless and the grounds just beg for you to come and explore them. 
recognized by two of the most renowned luxury hotel guides, the leading hotels of the world, and the Kiwi Collection. You know before even arriving that you are in for a true five-star experience. Villa Vita Park has been designed about 17 years ago and we wanted it to really be sort of uh, very uh, reminiscent of what Portugal was in the old days, a little village with great Moorish and sort of Algarvian architecture and sort of these whitewashed walls and beautiful chimneys and, and just great uh, terracotta tiles and great landscape and it's just uh, a very warm village feel to this resort. Beautiful tropical gardens. Uh, this landscape was developed about 17 years ago by a top uh, landscape artist out of Florida and really we wanted to incorporate a great landscape that was reminiscent of the Algarve, of the coast, the fauna and flora of Portugal, but also give it a very tropical feel. The villas are very private on the far end of the resort and beautiful swimming pool. Very private sort of little oasis uh, in, in, within the resort and we really want that for sort of guests that want to come and, and stay so for more than 10 days with families and just be totally away and it's a little home away from home. Imagine your own villa within the hotel complex with swimming pools, gardens and gated entrances to give you the privacy you deserve. It's this home-from-home home philosophy that attracts all manner of guests from around the world, including famous sports personalities such as Michael Schumacher, to name but one. As this is an ocean resort, something that all the guests can share are the wonderful private beaches that adorn this property. We've got a beautiful little private beach uh, down on the bottom of the cliff, which we really want to sort of make that a little oasis, more for romantic couples. And you know, obviously the, the families use the, the swimming pool. We also have a beautiful beach out in our beach club on uh, the Arts Nautica restaurant, which is only five minutes away. A meal here might just be the perfect way of finishing off your exhausting day of lying in the sun. Set upon wooden stilts, this contemporary beach restaurant is located close to the water's edge and serves excellent seafood and local specialties. But even more awaits you at the hotel. We have uh, six restaurants in the, in the resort. These six restaurants out in the resort allow our guests to experience different cuisines every single day during a week's stay. Villa Vida Park has a unique wine cellar in its uh, uh, property. Its uh, wine cellar is uh, eight meters below ground. Uh, we have a few thousand bottles of wine in that cellar. And we have basically three sections. The Portuguese section with the best Portuguese wines you can find. And some of them you can find no longer because they don't, are not in the market, but we still have some, some of those bottles. Wines of the world. There we have wines from all over the world. Again, the best wines you can find. The hotel also claims to have some of the best sporting facilities of the whole region, including golf, an excellent way to exercise after those indulgent evenings of wine and fine dining. We have several sport, uh, sport facilities, basically so people can entertain themselves and enjoy a bit of fun. We have a, um, a mini golf, we have tennis courts, then we have a gym so people can do a bit more of an exercise. We have an indoor pool where people even in the winter can do some, some swimming. Though obviously with the beautiful ocean we have swimming outside is obviously a must. Ah, an invigorating dip in the ocean after that exertive game of pitch and putt. Or possibly you may wish to consider paying a visit to the pool bar where a healthy fruit cocktail will spur you on for your next excursion. The whole region of the Algarve is filled with places to visit and explore, so there really is never a dull moment. There's always something to keep you occupied. One such place is located only an hour's drive away. It's the picturesque town of Sagre. Its wonderful port of Baleera has been supplying the local communities and businesses with fresh fish for many years. It attracts many of the region's top chefs, such as Hans Neuner, to visit and purchase the fresh produce. 
We do here very modern French style cuisine based on the products we, we find here everywhere. Actually, we're using 80% products from the country here. Some things we buy from France, some things we buy from all over the world, but in 80% it's local products we use here because you get everything here. The fish that we get here is, as you can see, right from the Atlantic Ocean. It's the freshest product you can get. I mean, I worked in many places all over the world, you didn't get it that fresh. They catch it at night time or in the morning and I have it in the same, in the same day you have it on the plate. One of the products you get here really, really perfect is the Roballo, the Ludimer, the sea bass. You get them in these sizes, perfectly fresh, and I smoke them somehow with, uh, with some oysters from Sargis, with some apple pure, apple, and sauerkraut, for example. It's a very strange dish, but it tastes really nice. One of our, our special dishes we do is the Munchik lamb. We have on the, on the menu right now, actually, with, uh, with our homemade olive bread and Lado de Colonato, it's a very, very interesting ham from, from Italy with snake beans. That's actually, it's a very simple, very clean plate. Very. This is the product who counts, you know, you have a perfect lamb, you have some perfect beans, you have a perfect bread you make yourself and then there's not much you need to do. It's always the product matters. If you have a perfect product, there's not a lot to do. You should keep it like this, just very simply so you have the really pure flavors. The guests pay, so we have to do the best we can, the best product and the best quality you can do. They deserve what they pay for, you know. You simply can't put a price on this timeless setting. After a good night's rest, the energy levels are restored. So why not explore one of the 30 golf courses on offer in the Algarve? This is the Oceanicos Amandera 45-hole course, which is renowned for its excellent eco-friendly policy as John Schauder explains. The villas, golf courses, and the entire property, 618 acres, is designed with the environment in mind. All of our infrastructure, including water, sewage, roads, electricity, everything is to minimize the impact we have on the local areas. Of course, it wouldn't be world class if you didn't have your own Hummer-style golf buggy to drive around in. Set in an area of outstanding natural beauty, with fabulous views to the magnificent Monchique Mountains and across to the ocean, this course simply couldn't be easier to get to. The two courses we have here, they are signature designs, uh, even though Nick Faldo, who designed one of them, does not like to use that word. He was instrumental from the start designing it, as was Christy O'Connor Jr., obviously a very famous golfer in his own right over here on the European side. They've designed 18 holes each, and have made at least handfuls of visits. Christy O'Connor Jr. actually lives around in the area, so he does frequent us quite often. Golf is not just purely about the sport. It's also about the 19th hole, or in this case, the 46th. The clubhouse is the perfect way to unwind and really take in the views around you while discussing the all-important tactics for the next day's round. Think of the Algarve and you think of sunshine breaks and relaxing holidays. You imagine golden beaches on the coast of calm seawaters, sun-kissed tourists relaxing and sampling the delights that this wonderful region of Portugal has to offer. Well, you won't be disappointed, because this is exactly how it is. Throughout this program, we have explored coves and cliffs, hotels and golf courses, with, of course, more to come. However, the beaches of the Algarve are, without a doubt, the icing on the cake. With over 100 miles of coastline to choose from, you will never tire of seeking out long, flat beaches, beaches here are undoubtedly magical. With the mid-afternoon heat becoming too much for some, it might just be the time for a bit of sheltered pampering back at the hotel. The look of the spa, it's like a, a Roman spa, Roman style spa. Um, yeah, we have a lot of facilities, different ones. We have a jacuzzi, we have the sauna, we have steam baths, two different ones a cold waterfall, uh, showers, different showers, jet showers, a uh, relaxing area, Razul Bath. To get to this exquisite spa, you take a short walk 
or private buggy ride through the subtropical park of the hotel, which makes relaxing in the warm bubbles with a fruit cocktail seem so much more rewarding. We do massages, we do uh, like kind of medical type of massages. Um, I'm doing physiotherapy here and osteopathy. My colleagues do uh, beauty treatments, we do facials, uh, body treatments, manicure, pedicure. We have different uh, beauty ranges. We work with Canebo and Talgo, St. Bart and Veo. We have great hydrating treatments, body treatments, uh, for example with uh, natural products like aloe vera from St. Bart is a really nice treatment, but also the other body treatments are really nice to, to do after. A hydrojet bath that we light different candles and um, it's uh, like a massage to the full body. It's really nice, it's very relaxing. We put different essences in the water and it's really the highlight of the spa that we have. With your senses thoroughly invigorated, it's time to explore again. The Sagres Fortress. It was the area where Prince Henry the Navigator decided to make a place where they could see better ships coming and going to Africa. We can say that Prince Henry was not really a navigator. We always say Henry the Navigator, but he was the father of the discoveries. The prince and his people appear to have been hugely instrumental in the way that we travel today. So Prince Henry was the man who had the ideas, so he put them together. And then the discovery started in 1415, when they went to Ceuta, North Africa. And then later on, we had the um, uh, navigator from Lagos, uh, Giliano, who went to Cape Pujador in 1434. Then later on, Vasco da Gama, or 97, and then Pedro Alves Cabral into Brazil. So all the navigation started here. We're heading slightly inland to the whitewashed city of Silves. Once the capital of the whole district, and referred to in the beginning of the 19th century as the Kingdom of the Algarve, it is presided over by the impressive Castelo de Silves, which dates back to the days of the Moors in the early 11th century. Most of the town and nearly all its ancient buildings were destroyed by the earthquake of 1755, but it remains enchanting with its hilltop cathedral of Gothic design and ancient tombs. The cafes and houses around the cobbled streets at the very heart of Silves are charming. It's a very relaxed town with hustle and bustle kept to a minimum. The locals greet you with a warm smile that shows just how proud they are of their home and its culture. And some of that culture is in its famous pottery that is seen all over the world. Well, the pottery, pottery was founded in 1968 by two artists, an Irish artist, Patrick Swift, and Lima de Freitas, a Portuguese artist. And their idea was to revive the traditional Algarve pottery. And um, they introduced some of their new designs as well as some of the old designs which they tried to be influenced by, but never copy. And the emphasis was on the hand-painted, handmade pieces, which are very individual. Very, very varied the clientele. Um, we, we have people from as far away as Japan to Australia, New Zealand, America. Um, obviously, the, the, the big problem with people live far is can't, they can't carry a lot back with them. Uh, we, we do have people from all over the world, so, which is great. A short stone's throw from the potteries brings us to the lovely fishing port of Lagos, where our world-class trip to the Algarve will soon be coming to an end. Once the home of our friend, Prince Henry the Navigator, the town is steeped in history. Now it's a hub for cafes, shopping, and having fun in the sun.
A statue of the boy king of Portugal, Dom Sebastião, presides over the main square, watching the tourists go by. He became heir to the throne two weeks before his own birth, due to his father's death in 1554, and succeeded to the throne three years later. On the waterfront, protecting the town, is the Forte da Ponte Bandiera. Built in the late 17th century, it guarded the entrance to the harbor, where we find this excellent replica of the Caravel Boa Esparanca. Set amongst the more modern-day gin palaces that can be found in the marina, it keeps hold of some of that ever-important history that visitors expect to find in Lagos. As our journey comes close to an end, it's time to batten down the hatches and call the hotel concierge to arrange for our boat to collect us for a romantic trip home. Our captain has his crew set the scene as he sets the modern-day navigation systems into action and off we sail along the coast, with a touch of bubbly to assist in getting the most pleasure from these wonderful views. The Algarve leaves us with a warm feeling for its culture, history, and wondrous surroundings that would suit any world-class traveler, from the dedicated sunbather to the culture vulture. Sadly, that's all we have time for. It's time for us to say see you soon for our next episode of World Class. Till then, goodbye.